Hi, today I am going to present the big data or high throughput data analysis, visualization and plots. As you remember, in my last class, I have presented the details about the p-values, fold changes, volcano plots, basically all the fundamental details about the differentially expressed genes. Now I'm going to show you some of the most interesting point which is required for all kinds of studies and research and of course for publication and thesis presentations. So what you need to understand, what is data visualization? It is a kind of the art and the science of making data easy to understand and consume for the end user shows the right amount of data in the right order in the right visual form to convey the high priority information requirement understanding consumer need nature of data available tools and techniques to represent the data last step in the data life cycle that is visualization now what are the lessons which you need to learn in this topic is the data, big data, analytics, powerful data visualization, understanding visualization and visualization purposes and the methods, understanding the design consideration considerations that lead to powerful data visualizations, understand the effect, the effective techniques to create data visualizations and understand best practice tips for presenting data visualization. So there are two different types of data, quantitative and qualitative data. Quantitative data is measurable, collected through measuring things that have a fixed reality, close in depth. Qualitative data is descriptive, collected through observation, field work, focus groups, interviews, recording or filming conversations, and it is open in depth. Now, Excellence in visualization data can be presented in the form of rectangular tables or in the colorful graphs of various types. Tables are small, non-comparative, highly leveled data sets. Graphs are basically amount of graph rows, big data, which will help you to give the shape, real shape to the data. And the objective of visualization is to show and even reveal the data, induce the viewer to think of the substances of the data, avoid distorting what the data have to say, make large data sets coherent, increase the eyes to compare different pieces of data, reveal the data at several levels of details, serve a reasonably clear purpose, closely integrate with the statistical and verbal descriptions of the data sets. Now, the types of charts which you generally need to understand and plot. Line graph, which is very common, a scatter graph or a scatter plot, bar graph, stack bar graphs, histograms, pie charts, box charts, bubble graph, dial, geographical data maps, pictographs. Now, tips for data visualization, fetch appropriate and correct data for analysis. Sort the data in the most appropriate manner. Choose appropriate method to present the data the data set could be pruned. The visualization could show additional dimension for reference. The numerical data may need to be binned into few categories. High level visualization could be backed by more detailed analysis need to present additional textual information. The most important thing which I would like to add here also, you need to have a basic code experience especially for data plots, visualization purpose, you cannot always go for ready-made software for plotting or visualization purpose. So you also need to be familiar if you want to have some kind of modifications or changes in the presentation of your data. So for example, here now I start, if you are working on NGS, next generation sequencing data or RNA, for example, RNA data, the simple plots you need to think about heat plots or heat map for example here you can see the cases and the genes then these intensity color intensity are representing the expression values in cases and control conditions and they appear quite clearly and different you also need to think 
this is about raw data. It is not normalized data. Then you can also think normalization. After normalization, what type of color you need to choose even in heat map or color, or color map. So the process gene and expression, here you can see how it could look like. Then estimate the expression distribution given cell level covariates. Covariates, gene expression distribution for each gene and each individual. Here you can see. Then you can think about the distance matrix across the individuals, which can be something different. Then you can go for hypothesis testing by distance measured regression or kernel regression based on some kind of the individual personal information such as age, ID, male or female and some more conditions. Now you can think something more. For example, I discussed yesterday about volcano plot, MA plot and the heat map. Here you can see also the scattered plot. So this is for PCA plot. So you can group them. So the visualization, you can change them. You can also make the line over the circles. So the lines over the circles with different colors in order to make it more attractive. This is basically representing two conditions, control and treatment. But you can make some further changes. For example, this control has all the three controls are same color. You can make it same color, but with different threshold if you are known about the expression values. And that could also say more than two, three information. So you, based on color, plotting style visualization, you can also give maximum information instead of looking for the pool of data. Now, the fold volcano plot, it can present the log to fold changes, p values in parallel. So in one figure, you are able to see both the values, p values, and of course, the fold changes. Then MA plot is again here. So log to fold change, and then mean of the normalized counts. Then here, heat map is representing the cluster gram as well as the gene expression values for different conditions, control and the treatment. Now you can go for another way of plotting. If you are looking for the complete map for your manuscript or complete analysis of your project, then you can think what are the target which we are going to achieve and what we are going to present in the form of figure. So for example, here log to fold change, then here another plot is presented here, then heat map for showing the different conditions and width followed by the cluster gram in the sample as well as in the genes also. Then you can go for network level understanding to understand the network dynamics. Then you can go for functional annotation. And here the, you can think about, can we make it by our own or you can also take the assistance of the software. Then mutational analysis in this way or survival analysis in the latter form. So this is what you can think about the patient, prostate patient for rna sick data. So this is rna sick data. And as a layman, you don't need to think much. If you understand your project, you can immediately plot all these figures for your prostate cancer or any type of cancer rna sick data profiling. Now think about the simplified workflow. You also need to think if you are doing a small work or big work for any project, you need to go for this workflow so that you can also understand and you can also implement and the audiences or readers can understand how the person has carried out the entire tasks. For example, from experiment design to sequencing to quality control, then transcriptomics profiling, differential gene expression profiling, functional enrichment analysis or functional profiling. <coughs> and now you can think in another way. For example, this is the workflow for NGS in COVID-19. So you can also think about the project goals in different project form. How are you going to apply? So in a simple next generation sequencing workflow for COVID-19 consists of four major primary, uh, four primary stages, nucleic acid extraction, library preparation, sequencing, and data analysis. This process, DC first, the viral genetic material from the purposes such as identifying variants and tracking the transmission patterns. The most common method used is amplicon based sequencing, which targets the viral genome specifically. And here you can see finally 
when you have analyzed your data up to differentially expressed genes, you can think about the functional assay, geoterm and pathway analysis, protein-protein interaction or network level understanding. Then you can think about gene regulatory networks analysis, then gene and disease association. You can think about it. Then protein chemical analysis, drug compound analysis. There are vast amount of diversity or goals which you can change after initial analysis. Now think about different RNA seq data types. For example, here six RNA sequencing data are available. Then what are you going to do? There are normalization methods are also different. So which method will be suitable for your data? Then differentially expressed genes prediction. There are large number of yesterday I presented DESEC2, HR, Lima, but there are Lima, DESEC, BASIC, SAMSEC, Poisonsec, QuasiSec, NOISEC. So these are the different things, which different methods, which method is suitable and how are you going to present? You also need to be prepared if you are using any of these methods. Why are you using this method? What is the benefits and why it is better to use for your project so that you can answer easily? Now, think about the another workflow. So here, RNA-seq data to networks. If someone is interested deeply in the RNA-seq data to network level analysis, then what they need to think about full and trans. This is also a kind of visualization. So you need to think what, uh, how I'm going to present the workflow. For example, here, full length transcriptome, optimized short read, rna -seq pipeline, integrative annotation, then read aligning information where you are using SAM tools or something more. Quantification information, gene transcript, structural information. Then look for development and integration of tools, multi-omics approach, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Then go for co-expression network analysis, regulatory network analysis, a structural dynamics of the transcript. Yes. So next part is what is gene expression analysis and what are the requirement or what are the stages as I have yesterday summarized. You need to think about transcriptomics from data or microarray data, differential expression analysis, single cell rna seq analysis. So quantification and normalization, functional enrichment analysis, and finally the challenges. Now, cluster and expression map. Someone can look about this. This lining plot, white line plot in heat map is basically, sometimes you can put it manually on the PowerPoint slide, or there are some, some softwares also ready-made which are easily uh, available and free of cost available, and you can implement it and easily plot them in a very well-defined manner. Now, principal component analysis. Here you have, again, control and treated. Then one is outlier. That means it does not belong to any group. So PC1 versus PC2. In principal component analysis, there are different groups of comparison which you can perform. So this is how you can look for visualization. Now it comes to sample reads. Some people can see, say that I want to plot some of the reads for our genes which were observed in our rna -seq data then they can also present in this way so these are the reads which you can annotate it with atgc sequences also in different genes and that will be also one of the finest way of presentation of for the snps for uh, for if it is like whole genome sequencing or whole exome sequencing then you can go for also the snps presentation in terms of the sequences, which sequence is mutated. But if in terms of expression, it is not that kind of worth. So it is mostly the people are not interested to plot the reads or the sequences when they are talking about the gene expression. Then it comes another way of presentation of the gene expression. Things here it is saying gene differentially expressed genes. So how are you going to present the reads for all the differentially expressed genes? It's all up to you. And then finally, it comes to the reads to interpretation. How are you going to interpret your results? So this is visualization, which is one way of interpretation. But you also need to write in text what is your real interpretation or conclusions. So for example, here, principles. What is the best way to present the data that benefits as many people as possible? Then precedent, what are the main analytic strategies for this data? Universal question how do we make 
a culturally sensitive interpretation of data considering language barriers and different world views so this is what you need to think so sample reads which are the raw data generated by sequencing instruments or you can say platforms and their interpretation involves converting these sort DNA fragments or reads into meaningful biological informations such as identifying genetic variants, gene expression levels, or reconstructing a full genome. This process includes data cleaning, alignment to a reference genome, and a statistical analysis, which can result in reports that detail actionable findings for clinical or research purposes. Now, think about the broad thinking. This is if you are thinking about some higher impact journals, then you need to think what will be the well organized way of data visualizations. And you try to bring the idea in four to 10 figures, the conclusions also, so that the audiences can easily understand from just figure visualization that what you are going to say in the entire paper instead of reading the whole paper now what could be the key takeaways when you are thinking about differential gene expression analysis you need to think about normalization input data format statistical models multiple testing corrections visualization and something some additional considerations are always required now input in input you can have fast q files or if you are looking for any kind of rna seq data or if you are working on microarray data then it could be dot cell file or some other form of data so the input could be rna seq reads for two phenotypes reference annotations chipsic data reads for two phenotypes then analysis will include identifying the differentially expressed genes using some of your desired softwares or your own codes then filter differentially expressed genes reasons from rna seq reads for visualizing by using your own software or Galaxy or something else. Then in case of chipsic data, you need to go for removing the redundant reads, adjust read positions, calculate peak enrichment, and identify epigenetic binding events. And then finally, you have to focus on the output that is visualizing enriched peaks and target differentially expressed genes in IGV or the other softwares. So, of course, I will be presenting each of the NGS techniques in my next lectures, but this is kind of basic introductory information for you to understand. And thank you very much. Please don't forget to subscribe our channel.